Hi, I'm Kevin E.G. Perry from NME, and we're here with Emily Evis backstage at Glastonbury. Um, I want to start off by asking you about uh, the biggest act of the weekend. He's had his song chanted by more people than anyone else. He's on more t-shirts than anyone else. Jeremy Corbyn, was it the biggest crowd ever at the Pyramid stage, do you think? It certainly felt like that. Yeah, I think um, all the lanes through all the markets and things started getting blocked and yeah, I don't think you could get another person in that field. So um, people were listening. We also had the other stage packed before the Kaiser Chiefs came on, and um, which is why we put another another feed on that stage because we were concerned about the amount of people that would be trying to get into the pyramid. And that was a huge moment, wasn't it? Yeah. It was great. And I mean, I've been coming here, you know, seeing people like Tony Benn talking at the left field. Um, did it, it? It feels like those sorts of ideas that Glaston were talking about for a long time are, are going mainstream, and that felt like that moment of of Corbyn, with, you know, on the pyramid stage was was that happening? Yeah, I think it's been such a long time that you'd put a political leader in that in that place, but it felt like the right time. They're all things that we've been campaigning about here for such a long time. And, and the history that the festival has with politics and CND. And yeah, it all kind of, it really felt like the right time. And, um, and it was a really, uh, it was quite an overwhelming moment actually. A lot of people were very um, moved by it. Yeah, there was lots of tears in the crowd and yeah. it, it felt like a, something really special. Yeah, it really was. It was something totally special and a complete one-off. Uh, completely different, but uh, we've got had Johnny Depp here this year, Brad Pitt, Bradley Cooper. What's going on? This is the most Hollywood Glastonbury ever. <laughs> um, Tilda Swinton as well. I, yeah, I, I don't know, <laughs> to be honest. I can't, I can't answer that. But, um, but yeah, it's great. I mean, you know, I think probably because they don't get any hassle, they can just walk around and watch bands and be treated like normal people. I guess it shows the appeal of the festival that there's something for everyone. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, I think it probably does. And, um, and everyone's, you know, they, yeah, they just get into it and they kind of go and get stuck in like everybody else. So, honestly, are you, is it a tiny bit relieving to know you're not doing this next year to have a year off, you get a holiday? <laughs> well, the years off are normally quite busy, actually. We spend a lot of time kind of, um, you know, looking at everything and, and doing kind of bigger long-term projects, like looking at tickets and passes and things like that. There'll be um, a lot of work to be done, but... Um, but you know, it's sad to think about it at the moment because it's been such an amazing festival and um, I can't really remember um, one quite like this, you know. There have been so many unique moments, really um, quite an emotional festival, quite a kind of uplifting festival, a really incredible atmosphere. People are so upbeat and happy and looking after each other. The crime is the lowest it's been for a long time. And um, yeah, it's, it's been really a positive, positive event. And um, so, yeah, when we think about a year off, we're all a bit like, oh, that's a shame. But actually, I think it, the farm needs it and I think the village needs it. And, um, and we'll come back um, with some new ideas as well. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, you say about the amount of work you've done the following years. I know after the last fellow year, you introduced the park and block nine. Um, so, uh, can we expect uh, similar ideas of, of expanding new areas, that sort of thing, when it comes back in uh, in 2019? Uh, I think there'll probably be a couple of radical kind of um, switches around, and you know, maybe a bit of a rejig of, um, you know, certainly like I was walking through the park last night, and I thought I had this idea about I was looking up the hill. It's about two in the morning. And I was looking at all the venues and they were all like banging, you know, really kind of going off. And I was just thinking, oh, I had this like, sudden idea of something we could do, which is quite okay. radical. <laughs> and I thought that'd be a good one for good the year man. off. It's the kind of thing you couldn't do in a year, but I think two, it gives us a bit right. of time. So those sort of things we can do. And um, yeah, I, there's, there's lots, of, lots of little, you know, tweaks and kind of um, everybody who works here. I think the thing about the festival is that it's run by the most devoted team of people. Uh, and they've really put everything into it, whether it's the markets or the areas or the fire service or the you know, health and safety team or whatever it is, everyone is just completely um, committed to making it as brilliant as it can be. And it's, it, um, it really strikes you and all the volunteers as well and yeah. you, all the water trade people cleaning the loos, you know, there's all the time. And there's a kind of turnover of people and they're all like just, you know, happy doing their job. Yeah. And it is quite moving when you kind of think about the amount of people it takes to make it work. 
they put so much into it that I think they'll all, you know, appreciate a break. Yeah. Uh, so you've got, we're back in 2019 for the next festival, yeah. then 2020 is the 50th anniversary, is yeah. that right? So you're already looking ahead. Is it right you've already booked some people for that? Mm-hmm. We've booked some, um, we've booked um, a couple of bands. Um, but I can't give anything away. <laughs> it's too early. And also, like, anything can happen. We're trying not to confirm too much because it's a long time. Yeah. And we kind of want to look at all the options and, and really kind of make sure that it's right. But, yeah, that luckily, you know, we're in a really good place and, um, and there's um, lots of great bands that want to play. And then after that, there's a variety bizarre, bizarre yeah. rather, happening in 2021. Yeah, that's right. Um, so what can you tell us about that? Have you got the site for that yet? We're looking at uh, three different sites at the moment and that is, um, I'm really excited about that. I think some, doing something different um, on a new site and kind of looking at a whole new space um, is quite, it's quite appealing, quite exciting as well. Um, there's something amazing about the familiarity of here. You know, this is our home, this yeah. is where we live. We walk around these fields every day of the year pretty much. So we kind of, we know each hedgerow and each tree and where, you know, the limits to what you can put in a field. Whereas looking at new sites with like different landscapes is quite exciting. What we can put in those places and what we can having some rolling installations and stuff. Um, so yeah, we're, we're kind of, we're, we're onto that, but that's another thing really for next year when we've got a bit more time. Am I right in thinking that it's going to be a bit more sort of like the Shangri-La, more art installations, maybe a bit more of a sort of Burning Man vibe to it? Um, probably a bit more like yeah yeah Shangri-La and Block Nine and um, and the green fields and I'm giving everybody it'll be the same team of people so we'll, everybody will have a space um, and it just depends on where we do it really as to kind of how how big it is and stuff but that's all stuff for next year. Perfect. And uh, so what's been what's been the one moment this year for you? If I force you to pick one. Oh no, you can't. I can't. There've been so many moments every day. There has been so many moments that I think this can't be beaten and then something else happens, which is like equally amazing in a completely different way. Um, so many great musical moments um, and many that I've missed. So, you know, like a lot to catch up on next week when I can like, watch some of it. Um, but um, I think definitely Stormzy will have to headline one day. I mean, he was phenomenal um, last night. And if anything has come through, um, in, in quite a kind of obvious way, it's that, you know, um, that was such a great moment. I, I spoke to John McDonnell earlier and he mentioned Stormzy as well, so he's got a fan fan in the cabinet, or hopefully the cabinet by the next yeah. time, next time <laughs> yeah. we have a festival. Brilliant. On that note, I think, thanks very much. Right, Cheers. thanks, thanks. Bye.